What's up guys and welcome back to another episode of the Realistic Career Mode. This is episode number 13 and we started today's of stuff on the back of the big rebuild in the last episode. Yep, tons of new players coming in. The most noteworthy ones though, of course, Alan Varela from Relegated Bournemouth. Well, that was quite realistic with the Cherries going down and the Argentine being too good for the second tier. Callum hudson Doy and Conor Gallagher both coming in for a combined fee of £49 million from Chelsea. And I have to say, I'm really pleased with how the team is currently looking as well. We had close to 90 million after the sale of Moyes Keane. And I had the potential to sign some certified wonder kids. And not just wonder kids, but players that are far too unrealistic. But I'm really pleased with how the team is looking right now. You know, realism is the key of this save. As I always say, I'm human. I'll make some mistakes every now and then. I can't always get it right in terms of signings or sale destinations. But for now, I've got to say that the big sales we've made, like Idrissa Gay going to Lazio, Moise King going to Napoli. I, th I think, you know, at the moment, we're doing a really good job of both sale destinations and new signings as well. I've signed predominantly Everton targets in real life and players that I can see moving on at some point in the future or at some point based on how the way this save has panned out so far in the likelihood of players going to Everton for a step up in terms of Varela from Bournemouth or for more first team opportunities like Gallagher and Hudson and Gray. So for the first game of the new season with our new look Everton team taking on the Gunners. Yes, Mikel Arteta's Arsenal heading into this game. Obviously, Sean Dyche's first fixture on Saturday afternoon. Heading into this game here, first game of the season at Goodison Park. Last year, I don't think we recorded a single scalp. At least I certainly can't remember one. But heading into this season, I thought... What we need to do this season is be a lot braver. You know, we've got more quality this season. We've got a stronger core, uh, more what you'd call set identity, if you will. And I think we've got to be braver. One of our big problems last year was we didn't score enough goals. I need to be more offense-based. I need to be more assertive. And hence, the game we had a perfect start. Dominic Calvert-Lewin gave us the opening goal of the game after Amadou Onana went down straight from kickoff, really. Unfortunately, Jesus did level after a rebound goal right before halftime for the Gunners. But to be honest, despite the Brazilian getting Arsenal back on level terms, I thought I was playing really well in this game. I was having some really good build-ups, really good moves. And with 25 minutes remaining on the clock... Well, this is the start we wanted to see. I've made a big gamble this year in saying to DCL, last year you had a few injuries, you only got me nine goals, but you were still my top scorer. I've brought you in a better supporting cast from the midfield, and I'm not going to sign a new striker, and I've, saw, and I've sold Moyes Keen as well. I'm trusting you, my number nine, the ex-Sheffield United boy, to get us the goals this year. Well, he scored the first, and he set up the second for you-know-who, Connor Gallagher. Yep, I spent big on getting the former Chelsea midfielder in. Graham Potter balancing the books, selling him and Hudson Odoi for a combined 40, 49 million. And Conor Gallagher is off the mark straight away. And after Pickford made a great save later on to keep us still leading by a goal, with 11 minutes on the clock. This is what I was talking about in the last episode, and what I briefly mentioned there. DCL supporting cast is a lot better than last year's, and no one can deny that. we got Gallagher, we got Hudson-Odoi, we're going to have Mavadidi for a full year and not just one year. We'll have Damari Gray either starting or coming off the bench as well. Amadou Onana is still here. We picked up an injury on the first game. I wonder the reason why I was so keen on Gallagher. Well, didn't you see his first goal for Chelsea this season against Palace? The team he was on loan at last year, that screamer from range, the game winner, that's what Conor Gallagher can do. He's got a lethal right boot, he can pull the trigger from range, and this kid is something special. What a bargain we've picked up. Chelsea weren't going to play him, they wanted to balance the books, they got him off the books, they sold him to us for 30 million. What a bargain that could prove to be. What a debut for Conor Gallagher. That second goal already. Goal of the season contender. Absolutely class. And after last year, or again, I don't think we had a single scalp all season long. Well, we got one on the first game. Yep, Everton 3, Arsenal 1. Keeping my feet on the ground, though, for a very simple reason. For some reason, I don't know why you guys can let me know. In fact, actually, can you let me know in the comment section down below? Out of the traditional big six in your FIFA career modes... Which is the team that seems to struggle the most or not be as good as the others? Because for some reason this year, if you're watching my Docs to Glory save in particular, 
For some reason, Arsenal always seem to struggle. So keeping my feet on the ground. For some reason, I don't know why, because we know they're going for the title this year in real life. Having an amazing season under Mikel Arteta. And I'm sure a lot of neutrals would love to see it as well. It, I don't know why they're struggling so much in this save, but they are. So that 3-1 win there, it's a, it's a great win. It's a fantastic win on the opening day. But keeping our feet on the ground, it's one game week. Let's keep it calm. So... Following that, we negotiated a loan deal for Nathan Patterson. I think I am going to loan him to Aston Villa. Keep Matt Dockett as my starting right back and possibly bring in a new backup this year uh, for the Irish International. And heading into the following game after we sold John to Swansea as well, our youngster, our young right back has gone. We took on a newly promoted side, Watford the Hornets. And isn't it typical in football? Yet we can beat Arsenal 3-1. But heading into this game against the newly promoted Watford side, yeah, we're behind inside the first 15 minutes. Absolutely atrocious start. Michaelenko, I should have sold him to Real Madrid. Why were Real Madrid interested? I still can't figure it out. Should have sold him. Forget the realism. I should have sold him. But this was one of those games where like nothing was going according to plan. We fell behind for a terrible, terrible mistake. And then I missed a sit with DCL. And then right before the break... Can you believe it? Onana on match day one went down with a three-month injury or broken toe. And I rarely see this, but right before the break, Mavididi running through one-on-one -on -one, pulls his hammy. Pulls his hammy. He takes a shot, but pulls his hammy. And I was thinking, is that a ruptured Achilles? What is that? Because he went down clutching that leg. The injury occurred. There was no contact. He hit the deck as soon as he hit the ball wide from close range. And Mavididi forced off on the stretcher. So Watford at the break, leading by one. I'd missed two golden chances, and in the second half, I was thinking this is going to be one of those games. One of those games, because somehow, the sub for Steffi, Dwight McNeil, fires wide from six yards, and I thought, sod this. This is just one of those games where nothing's going to go right. But Connor said, why don't you give me the ball, Gaffer? You saw what I can do in the match day one fixture against Arsenal. Give me the ball. He scored a brace on his Goodison Park debut. And then gets his third of the season already to level it for us. Everton won. Watford won. Conor Gallagher already looking like he could be the bargain of the season. And we're not even after the summer transfer window yet. Everton won. Watford won. And finally, we got what we deserved in the second half as well. Yeah, two quick goals in 10 minutes. Saw Gallagher level and DCL give us the lead for the first time in the game and these two to start the season off well let's just say I think I've got DCL's partner that he didn't have last year, the guy he could rely on is his right hand man because Gallagher's got three goals already and he should have had four as well after I missed his sitter and uh, Calvert-Lewin's header saw us get the win in a 2-1 victory from coming from behind we win the game and our blushes are spared certainly deserved it you'll see the stats, look at this I want to be fuming and I don't want this game but what a start for DCL and Conor Gallagher. I think these two are going to have an amazing bromance this year. They are both off to electrifying starts. Our new signing scoring buckets in a variety of ways. And DCL's got a couple. And he's my top assist maker so far as well. you love to see it. The only bad news is despite winning the first two games, we've got two injuries already for two of our starters. Yep, first Onana going down with a three-month injury. And now Mavididi is down with a long-term injury as well. Torn quadricep muscle. Unbelievable. Two. Two big injuries in two games to start the season off for two of my regulars in the midfield. Thank God I spent big on investing in my midfield this year with the likes of Gallagher, hudson Adoy, Cody is now a DM, and of course Varela as well. So following that, we had two bids for Neil Mopai as pass and has been loaned out to Villa Park. I think we'll get a bit more game time there because beyond Matt Doherty in this team, I don't think we'll play much this year. And I'm going to try and sign a new backup right back anyway. But for our final game today's episode here, after our two big bids for Neil Mopai, Got to be honest here, not sure about the Frenchman. I said I'm not too convinced. Got me a few goals last year, but not too many of them. I'm not against cashing in early after one year, but I gave him a chance on Wednesday night in the Caravan Cup, and he scored in his first appearance of the season. Yes, to be fair, it's against the Brewers, Burton Albion at home, a football league side, but even so, he had one shot, he scored it. And he got the game winner for us as well. So, yeah, who knows? More pie. Is he going to go straight away after one year to Benfica or Wolfsburg? Or will he stay? I'm not too sure. Even so, for the Toffees, it is a perfect 100% start. Back-to-back -back wins in the league. 
Don't look now, but we're top of the table. Of course, a long way to go, so don't read too much into it. And of course, through in the EFL Cup as well. They're still just shy of $14 million of budget. I'm still planning to make one or two more signings as deadline day is about to come round. The only negative so far is that despite two wins in a row in the league, we've got two big injuries already to two important players, Onana and uh, Mavadidi, down until around November time. Big blows. Otherwise, great start. But that will this episode of the Realistic Crew, guys. Big thank you for watching. If you enjoyed it, if you had then please do drop a like. Much love to you all. Have a fantastic day. And I will see you for next episode of the Realistic Crew mode featuring transfer deadline day with more signings to come, I'm sure, very soon.